Think the slow real estate market is a bad time to sell? Think again. In this video, I'm diving into how I managed to sell all of my Alberta rental properties quickly and for more than their appraised value in a challenging market. It's a deep dive into the power of understanding market supply and demand, the complex world of capital gains taxes, and what I plan to do with the money I made from the sale of these five properties. This is not just a story, it's your blueprint to smart investing in any market condition. What's up everyone, Darren Voros here. You might remember I had five rental properties in Alberta. They are all sold now. Despite a slow real estate market in provinces like Ontario, my portfolio sold like hotcakes even above the appraised values from less than two years ago. Why? Two words, limited supply. Alberta's market had fewer listings and my properties being legal duplexes made them even more attractive in this high interest rate environment. Investors love the idea of renting one unit and living in the other, a smart move for mortgage support. Having said that, not all went to people planning to live in them. In fact, two out of the five were snapped up by other investors. This underscores the diverse appeal of these properties in the current market. The quick sale, even in a slow market, reflects the strong demand for well-positioned real estate investments. Now, a lot of you have asked me about taxes when selling houses. Let's talk about it because sometimes people don't sell their houses since they worry about paying taxes, but sometimes it's not as scary as you think. We're going to look at it step by step and you might find out that paying taxes when selling a house can be easier than you expected. Take one of my properties in Alberta, for instance. I bought it for $325,000, sold it for $420,000, and the mortgage on it was $275,000. This would mean $145,000 in profits that I would have to pay tax on. Yikes, but not so fast. Let's break this down to see how it actually all works out. First, let's look at my cost base. To calculate your cost base, take your purchase price, closing costs, and add any renovations or improvements you made to the property. In my case, I purchased for $325 and spent approximately $70,000 on legalizing the basement apartment. So my cost base is $395. Next, we have to account for any fees I pay on the sale of the property. For simplicity, let's use 5% for realtor commissions and $1,500 for legal fees. There's one more fee that you have to take into consideration. That nasty little mortgage penalty for breaking my fixed term mortgage early. That's another $10,000. So my total selling costs are $21,000 in realtor commissions, $1,500 in legal fees, and $10,000 mortgage penalty for a total of $32,500. So my adjusted selling price is my sale price minus the selling costs. So that would be $420 minus $32,500 equals $387,500. In order to calculate my capital gains tax, I would take my adjusted selling price and subtract it from my cost base. In this case, my adjusted selling price is 387.5 and my cost base is 395, which gives me a capital loss of $7,500. If any of that confused you, here's the beauty of video. Just watch it over again. Since there's a capital loss, there would be no capital gains tax. In fact, this loss can potentially be carried forward to offset future capital gains if your properties are owned in a corporation like mine were, or you could use this loss to bring down your taxable income if you own them personally, meaning you would owe less personal taxes. So this all sounds like a bad move, right? As I'm losing money, but we still have to figure out the net amount of money I will receive on the sale of this one property. Remember, the mortgage balance is only 275,000 and my net sale proceeds are 387.5. So at the end of the day, I'll be given a check for $112,500. So as a quick recap, capital tax, $0 due to a capital loss and net amount in my pocket, $112,500. Another reason why I love being a real estate investor. It should be noted that these properties were owned under my corporation, which changes the tax game, but that's another video for another day. Now, what about the proceeds from the five properties I just sold? Well, I'm taking those and buying myself a new car. A new car! I'm kidding. Why would I take the money and invest in a depreciating asset or even worse, put it into the stock market? Ugh. Anyway, I'm reinvesting these funds into an eight unit new build in the heart of Toronto. This property will be valued at $6 million upon completion next year and I bought it for $2 million less than 18 months ago. This single property will generate more income than my entire Alberta portfolio. It's also consolidating more doors under one roof. And this is why I love developing new properties because they have minimal maintenance over the next 10 years. I'll rent to high quality tenants and because 
We are a new build. We don't fall under the same rent control guidelines as an existing rental. Not to mention the attractive CMHC financing options, which we get on this building because it's a multifamily. And this is what strategic reinvestment looks like. If you're interested in learning how you can invest with me in these solid assets, I've got some exciting news. I've just created a mutual fund trust, which allows you to invest in these deals with me with as little as $20,000. And yes, you can use your RSPs, your TFSAs, or any other accounts like RIFs or LIFs or your RESPs. If you're interested in growing your wealth alongside me, reach out for more details at info at darrenvoros.com. This is your chance to be a part of something big in the Toronto real estate market. So that's the wrap on my Alberta portfolio journey and a sneak peek into the future. Remember, in real estate, it's all about strategic moves and smart investments. My best advice, don't hold onto a property for the sake of holding onto it. Analyze the numbers, the current market conditions, and don't be afraid to reallocate those funds to a better investment. For more information on my investment opportunities, my courses on development, or to connect with me, check out darrenvoros.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.